Welcome back to The Perspective. I'm with Stephen Locke from Edelman. Stephen, the Trust Barometer Survey, how do you uh, uh, decide uh, who you interview and how representative is that? We interview 1,200 people in Indonesia. It's the seventh year we've done it. 1,000 of them we model to represent the Indonesian online public. And we try to model it by demographics, by gender and by uh, class. Now, because it's online, there's clearly a segment of the, uh, of the population we can't capture. But it's a pretty good demographic representation of the Indonesian population online, which, depending on which surveys you look at, is about 120 million people in, in, in Indonesia right now. We also do an extra group we call the informed publics, and they are uh, top quartile earnings, at least college educated, and identify themselves as being active consumers of media. And we ask the informed publics quite a detailed set of additional questions about specifics to do with uh, trust in business, what builds trust, and uh, how to manage trust. Is there a wide difference between the general population and the informed public? There, there isn't typically a kind of black-white difference, but what we do find is that, uh, particularly when economic times are good, around the world the informed publics tend to be somewhat more trusting of these key institutions than the general public, and we sometimes find, therefore, that um, there's a bit more scepticism from the general public. Now, this year, this 16-point rise uh, in Indonesian trust in government, that was of, of the general population. So where we're looking at the general population, uh, Indonesia still ranks as the third most trusting country in the world. And actually, it was one of very few countries to record any rise in trust in government. And interestingly, from the top line perspective, if you will, uh, Indonesia is the most trusting country in the world in business very high scores in trust in business and we see that high trust actually year after year uh, in the last uh, three or four years and Indonesia is the second most trusting country in the world uh, in media which is very interesting. Yeah, um, the, the rise in the trust in the government, can we talk a bit about, a bit about what you called the uh, peak Jokowi uh, in the run-up to this survey? Well. I'm slightly ironic when I say peak Jokowi because at the moment, of course, we're talking about this enormous con uh, controversy between KPK and Polri. Um, certainly when we did our survey around the time of the fuel subsidies, uh, the fuel subsidy cuts, trust in the government was extremely high, much higher than it had ever been before. Uh, whether that's peak Jokowi or whether he can sustain that public trust will, I suspect, be determined by how the government performs over the next five to nine months and that will start with things like uh, polri and how the government the president in particular addresses that issue but also how people see the government begin to deliver the change that it's promised um is this approval just for jacoe or, or for the government i mean would you say his personality is just carrying it it's a very interesting question we do ask a separate uh, stream of uh, inquiry and one of them is how much do you trust government spokespeople or regulators and this year we recorded a nine point rise in trusting government spokespeople and regulators alongside that trust a uh, huge trust change in trusting government so I think what's happened is the Jokowi effect has, has if you like driven a big increase in trust which has cascaded and has improved people's trust in government in Indonesia in general. Uh, trust is usually very sensitive to changes. Does uh, Do the results change fast typically in these surveys? Uh, how unusual is, is this result? Is this massive 16% uh, bounce? Well, what we have seen actually in a number of countries is that trust in government in the year before and the year after a general election can be extremely volatile. And we've got good examples of that. In India, we've recorded a massive increase in trust in government mm -hmm. with the election of Prime Minister Modi. In Japan and in Australia, we saw big increases in trust uh, prior to the election, uh, but just at the time of the election of Prime Minister Abe and Prime Minister Abbott. Uh, but in this year's survey results, we've seen drops in trust in government in both Japan and in Australia. So in a sense, of all the institutions, trust in government can be the most fragile, and in Indonesia in particular, my, my, my guess would be that trust in government is a bit like a car with only two gears, fifth or reverse, and so we'll see really quite frothy results over the next couple of years. Okay, well we've got to take a break, uh, quick break, can we see you in a moment?